Hi YouTubers, this is Alan. <coughs> uh, today I'd just like to talk briefly about what makes a good pipe. Some people tell you it has to be a briar or a meerschaum. Well, if you buy a good briar, a good meerschaum, pay a lot of money for it, you can more or less guarantee it'll be a good pipe. <coughs> That's not always the case. People have been smoking pipes for hundreds and hundreds of years. They came into Britain in the 17th century, early part of the 17th century, and they go back hundreds of years before that in other countries. And they'd be made from all sorts of material. <coughs> Here's some I've written down here, let's have a look. Uh, they'd be made from nuts, gourds, shells, terracotta, ceramics, pottery, various forms of metal, various woods, rock, stone, meerschaum, corn, you can go on and on, and that's not covering all of them. So, you can, the, the thing is to have something to smoke tobacco in. A pipe is simply a stem, or it's a shank with a stem and a bowl. <coughs> what matters is how it's made, really. <coughs> and the main thing is that the shank isn't, and the stem isn't too wide, and that it meets the bottom of the bowl. There are even ways of getting around this, because if you have a, a hole that is a little too high, you can put something in the bottom to alleviate that, such as uh, somebody wrote uh, earlier this week, um, corn, not corn, uh, rice, <coughs> which will just build up that little part of the, of the bowl uh, below the hole. So you can, you can buy pipes, um, estate pipes, if you want to clean them up and uh, sanitize them. On online, you can buy them in uh, second-hand shops, car boot sales, um, antique shops, so forth. <coughs> and you can buy them for a song, more or less. Now, a corn cob is about as good as it can get. A well-made one. Mississippi Meersham corn cobs, they're well-made. <coughs> and they will last you quite a long time. They will wear out eventually. But they don't cost much, so they, they're, they're cheap to uh, replace. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on getting a pipe. This one here is uh, ceramic and metal. <coughs> it's a lovely pipe. There's a, a filter, a metal filter inside it. It smoked perfectly. And it, yes, this is a pipe which is not a, a briar and it's not a hamisha. But I've got quite a few pipes here which are metal lined, ceramic lined, uh, terracotta, all sorts of pipes. And most of them will give a good smoke. <coughs> and if you look at the, if you read a book such as uh, Alfred Dunhill's The Pipe Book, it gives you the history of pipes going back for centuries. You see that. Uh, Pipes have been made from just about everything you can think of. This includes, of course, water pipes, hubbly bubblies. Also, you can you can smoke just tobacco in it, which most people do, of course, but. If you like me, on a small pension, uh, you can smoke herbal is herbal tobacco, which is a lot cheaper. Or you can mix it with tobacco. So you have this one, for instance, at the moment I'm smoking is uh, <coughs> green go, and what is it? I've mixed it up and forgotten what it is now. Oh yeah, it's clan and Virginia. <coughs> yeah, it's a nice smoke makes your tobacco go a lot further. It keeps it mild and I like a mild tobacco. I don't like a strong tobacco. But uh, the Indians for instance, the Red Indians, American 
the Native Americans used to smoke uh, sumac leaves, which is a herb, uh, in the bark of a red willow leaves, uh, and bark of several other trees, mix them all together and smoke those in the pipes. <coughs> and sometimes they mix these with a bit of tobacco. To bet they would, they would smoke wild rhubarb root. Now in Britain and China, it's well known that they smoke colt's foot, or henbane. And colt's foot uh, is also known as a poor man's tobacco. And I've, uh, I've used colt's foot mixing it with other leaves, such as mint and hazel, and drying them out and chopping them up, and then smoking them, mixing them with honey or molasses, <coughs> letting them dry out a bit, and then perhaps mixing some tobacco in with them as well. <coughs> that makes a very acceptable smoke. Not for everybody, perhaps. But I remember when I was a, a child, we used to have a, a plant growing. It, you find it growing, I don't know what they call it exactly. It looks like a sort of bamboo. It grows in most graveyards. For, it seems to thrive in graveyards. And you find it in all bits of wasteland. And we used to call it gypsy rhubarb. And we would cut off just below where the, uh, the pith is, for the bottom of the bowl, cut above it, drill a hole with a penknife, and cut a smaller, a thinner piece, and make a stem for it, and that was our pipe, like Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. <laughs> we would then uh, pick dock leaves, another thing that the, uh, that the Native Americans used to, used to smoke, and we would dry these out, crumple them up, put them in the pipe and smoke them. That was our tobacco. <coughs> and my mate's uh, mother, was a chippy, that's a bus conductor. And she used to have a quick smoke in between stops with the bus and then tap out a mega in and put it in a pocket. So we used to go and pick a pocket when she wasn't looking. And we would uh, open up these little mega ends and we would mix this in with the dock leaves and that was our tobacco. So I'm not suggesting you go out and do this, but I'm just showing you how people have smoked all sorts of things and then smoke them in all sorts of things as well. So you don't have to go out and spend a hundred pounds or two hundred pounds on a pipe. You can get a cheap one uh, from uh, what they call box sales in pipe shops. But have a good look at it. Take the pipe, <coughs> has to open up, take the stem out, run a pipe cleaner through it, see if it'll run cleanly through it. Have a look inside, see if the hole meets the bottom of the bowl. If it does, that pipe should smoke fine. It doesn't matter if it has little, blemish, little small bits of blemishes, blemishes on it, that doesn't really matter. It's nice to hold a pipe that looks nice, this looks nice for instance, and, and it makes you feel proud out in public that you've got a nice looking pipe. But if you're not bothered about that, well then, you can just go on smoking corn cobs for the rest of your life and you'll always have a good smoke. So I've said my bit. I know everybody's not going to agree with me, but uh, I think we're all tolerant people, pipe smokers. So until the next time, this is Alan saying, see you then.